prepare to get gas because it's time for the week in gear. The guitar gear world is back to normal this week with a bunch of strong new releases, updates, and limited editions. Wonderful. This week's show is sponsored by Music Distribution 101. More about that in a little bit. Okay, let's kick off this week's most exciting gear releases with a limited edition guitar from Ibanez. The Ibanez Geo range delivers a lot of guitar for your money, and I don't think that they get enough credit in a world full of budget guitars. But there is one that caught my eye this week, and I wanted to catch your eye too, because it's limited edition. This year, German music megahouse Thoman is celebrating their 70th anniversary, and a bunch of companies have released special editions of their regular products. That brings us to, deep breath, the Ibanez 70th Anniversary GRG121SP-SV. Coming in at 279 euros and available exclusively at Thoman, it looks pretty darn stunning and has specs that make it a very attractive and affordable axe. Full specs are on the screen right now, thank you, Victor. But my highlights are that it has a hard tail, so it eliminates some of those cheaper tremolo tuning issues. It's got two Ibanez humbuckers and it's a poplar body with a roasted maple neck and a very dark Jatoba fretboard. I love the Geo range. They're always fun and they punch above their price points, meaning that you can get similarly specced guitars for similar money. But with the Geo range, you have the name, the reliability and the customer service of Ibanez behind that budget guitar. And the spec, in my opinion, is fantastic. And although this guitar may not be for everyone because of those looks, it could be one of the best lower price 24 fret double humbuckers available, which is lucky because it's also available in that spec in other colors. So it's not technically a new model, but it's nice enough that I wanted to mention it. So if you don't like this finish of the 70th anniversary, go and get yourself a different finish. It's still gonna be the same specs. The finish, silver, is limited to 120 guitars. So if this uh, special edition in silver takes your fancy, don't hang around. I have been getting a fair amount of comments and DMs asking for links to the gear that I talk about in this show. So let me make it clear. There are links in the video description and to get there, you go to the text directly underneath this video and press the more button and then it'll open up and there's a whole new world available to you. But I'll also put the links in the comments section, which I will then pin to the top of the comments section and then you can always find it by going to the first comment of the comments section. Just so you know, these will be affiliate links so that anything you purchase through those links will support the channel at no extra cost to you. Number four, for those of you who feel amps are becoming more and more of just a big heavy box that you don't want to lug around anymore, listen up. DSM Humboldt have launched the Simplifier X. Wish I hadn't done that. An analog, hmm almost all analog, zero watt guitar amplifier and cab sim unit. It's fully stereo. It is, yeah, mostly analog and has two independent channels, each with three amp voicings, giving you six voices in total. Amp A is the hot rod side and has hot versions of the Vox AC30, so I think 60s top boost. It's got a Marshall JCM 800 and then a USA hot rod which I assume is the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, but I am more than willing to be corrected in the comments section. And if I've got that wrong, please let me know. Amp B is the more classic side with a Vox AC15, a Marshall Plexi and a Fender Bassman in the voices. And that's kind of weird. Uh, I would have put the classic stuff in Amp A and the Hot Rod stuff in Amp B. I also would have had the Amp A on the left and Amp B on the right, even though our pedals go in from that side. I don't know, it, it just, something there messes with my mind, but it's, it's kind of irrelevant. What is relevant is that the Simplify X has three modes of operation. Mode one is the AB amp and AB cab. So you can switch between two independent amp and cab combinations, like just having one amp here with that cab and then another amp here with a different cab. Mode two is AB amp and stereo cab, which is similar to mode one, but this mode also switches between two amp voices. However, the cabinets and the FX loop remain the same on both the left and right stereo outputs. So 
This allows you to customize unique cab and effect settings for each side. Thus, the result is a massive and big washy wall of stereo sound. And the third mode is fully parallel. In this mode, you can run both of the Simplifier X's amplifier voices simultaneously. So each amp routes through the left and right speakers, and essentially, you're running a double amp stereo guitar rig from a compact little stomp box. There are also three side-chained digital reverbs. There's room, plate, and ether. And this is the only part of the Simplifier X that is digital, which is why it's side-chained. So I think if you turn it off, you're running completely analog. It also has headphones out, aux in, and foot switch capability with the included foot switch. It's got cab sim bypass on both of the outputs as well as two jacks for those outputs and two XLR outs for DI. When I first looked at this, honestly, I didn't notice it didn't have foot switches on it. So when I saw the external foot switch, I was like, oh yeah, some people don't want a foot switch. So it makes sense to build it without it, but include the foot switch with it. The only thing that I dislike there is that it's connected by what seems like a 3.5 millimeter jack instead of the 6.3 millimeter jack that I'm used to. I'm staying metric. It, that, I'm used to that, and it's the small headphones one. And I think that might not be as stage worthy, but that's just me and my big stompy feet. Anyway, I played a simplifier first generation quite a few years ago, and I was really impressed. And I've only ever heard good to great things about the follow-up products. I like the menuless approach, and that demo from Joey Landreth sounds sublime. At around $470 in the US, this is certainly not a product for everyone and everyone's wallets, but if you are serious about going ampless, this should be on your list of solutions. Those wonderful links are in the video description and in that first comment. Before we get to number three on the list, it's now time to talk about this week's sponsor. Making this episode possible this week is Music Distribution 101. To help us musicians out, Mountain Submit have just released a course called Music Distribution 101. The course is full of advice from an insider of the music industry on decisions you can make during the distribution process, which will result in your music reaching new listeners. You'll learn everything you need to know about releasing your songs from choosing your artist name to making sure you abide by copyright law. Have you heard that under Spotify's new royalties model, distributors are being penalized for letting through fraudulent content? And because of this, actual musicians are being accused of being bots. And this course demonstrates the way to present your release in a way that shows the distributor what you are, a dedicated, real musician. So if you've always wanted to release music but weren't sure how, use the link in the video description and the promo code GG10 to get 10% off Music Distribution 101 and go be a rock star. By the way, if you're enjoying this weekly show, don't forget to subscribe and leave thumbs up so that more people get to see it in the future. Thank you. Third on the list, PRS have updated their S2 series. So <clears throat> time to cover ourselves in snake oil and jump aboard the marketing train. Tickets, please. Choo choo. The PRS S2 series now come with USA made pickups. That's it. But we'll, you know, we'll expand on that a little bit because, you know, why not? Okay. If I have this right, the PRS S2 line for me seems similar to the Fender Mexico line. It's more affordable than the PRS main line, but not as affordable as the SE line, which is the Squire to the Fender in that thing. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or you might compare the S2 to standard Fender and then standard PRS to custom. Sh no, because then. Regardless, it's, it's another level in between Squire and Fender, right? That's how it makes sense to me. Sorry, I'm a bit aggressive in this episode. I don't know why, I don't know why. Anyway, the S2 range of guitars are made in the USA, but also made in the same factory as the main line, but the S2s are cheaper. So that the specs and let's say build materials are not quite the tip toppy best that PRS can offer, which is also a bit odd. It's, it's like posting a letter second class because you go, 
First class letter, first class letter, first class letter, second class letter. Doing the same thing, but just not quite as good. There's actually a great comparison on the PRS website, and I hope Victor has it on screen now. It actually seems like the S2 range could be the best value for money, and it still has the bragging rights because it's got PRS on the headstock and doesn't have SE written on there. I mean, who, what kind of guitar company would try to pretend that their more cheaper guitars are the same as their more expensive guitars by giving it the same thing on the headstock? Who would do such a thing? I'm not going to give you the specs of the entire S2 range because all that's changed is the pickups and all those guitars would be ridiculous, but here is a five second slideshow of some of the S2 models, which Victor will set to some nice, relaxing music. Thanks, Victor. You're welcome, Andy. What I find a bit odd is that PRS has never really advertised the fact that the pickups on the S2 models were not USA made. I mean, I'm not saying they were hiding it, but they, you know, weren't telling people. And now that they are USA made, does that mean we're getting a better guitar for our money? Or is this going to be combined with a price hike? And I'm really sorry if that sounds cynical of me and jaded, but I know better than to trust someone who is offering something for nothing. How much difference will these other pickups actually make? That whole pickup conversation, and it will forever remain a mystery to most of us, but it does also mean that my favorite PRS guitar, the S2 Vila in white satin, is now even more attractive to me for some reason, which means it's now even closer to one day entering my studio through that door, but probably not. Anyway, if you're into the S2 range, you now get American-made pickups. You're welcome. Let's move on. No, oh, ho, ho! Gibson-inspired Epiphones. Go on, then. Epiphone have been very inspired recently by the Gibson Custom Shop, no less. And uh, are we up for another range of Epiphone-quality guitars with Gibson prices? Let's find out, because there's a total of 14 new models in this range. We got Les Pauls, we got Les Paul Customs, we got SG Customs, we got an ES-335s, and we got a whole bunch of acoustics, which I'm not going to cover much of, but will probably at some point. And again, I'm not going to give you all the specs of the guitars, because again, ridiculous, but Victor is going to show you a little beautiful slideshow set to the kind of music that plays in my head as I imagine the Gibson management doing their daily conga dance to the big room where they keep all the money. Some of you may have noticed that these new Epiphones now come with a real, almost authentic Gibson open book headstock. The electrics have all Gibson pickups and the 59 Les Pauls even come with Gibson custom buckers which are my favorite Gibson pickups. The finishes are still all poly though. No nitro here. Right, buckle up, because here are two things I never thought I would say, especially recently. Number one. I think the pricing of these is almost fair to, yeah, almost. Number two, I really want that Ebony Les Paul Custom and if it had a bigger neck, I would be buying that SG Custom right now. I'd find a way to finance it. And I'm so thankful that it doesn't have a thick 50 star neck and it's got a 60s neck. Because if it did, I'd be in financial trouble. You know what? I don't even feel dirty for saying that. Oh, sorry, that's the doorbell. Well, that was weird. A guy in a really big car just dropped off a surprisingly heavy parcel and shouted, here's your money. No idea what this is about. Ooh. Anyway, these latest offerings from Epiphone have been something that many of us have been asking for for years. Just put a Gibson headstock on the Epiphones. Thank you. But my guess is that many of those same people are putting on their dancing shoes when they see the open book headstocks and then kicking them off again and taking to the internet to complain when they see the pricing. I'm not included in that list, but I, I almost am. 
What do we want? Open but headstocks on Epiphones. What will we pay? The same. This latest release further strengthens my theory that Gibson will be coming out with a new entry level range of guitars under a new brand or possibly using their maestro name at some point. And when it happens, remember where you heard it first, right here. Now, I'm obviously having fun here as a person who relays guitar news in a video every week, but as a guitarist, I would definitely vote with my wallet because if I walk into a guitar shop and I play one of these new Epiphones and one absolutely blows me away and is a must have, then I shall make the shop assistant think that I'm going to buy it. I'm gonna spend 30 minutes to an hour fighting over my own thoughts in my head and then leave with just a pack of strings and a pick that I will immediately lose like any other normal guitar player. Links are below, vote with your wallet. Andy's Pick of the Week. At number one this week is a not fuzz pedal from Beatronics. The Wannabe is a dual overdrive featuring a Klon style circuit and a Marshall Bluesbreaker style circuit. And I've got one right here, obviously, because I reviewed it earlier this week. And to be fair, it's flipping amazing. And for those of you that know Beatronics pedals, you'll know that they often make wacky, crazy fuzz pedals. And you'll be pleased to know that you can get pretty fuzzy if you stack these two circuits together. And for those of you who don't like fuzz, one of these does a pretty convincing clon and a pretty convincing blues breaker, albeit with some Beatronics flavoring. And as always with their pedals, Beatronics have gone above and beyond with the design, which is slightly to the detriment of the legibility of the controls. But thankfully, it's really simple to use. And if you've used drive pedals before, it's also intuitive. So you just gotta get your head around a few switches, which are also very simple. Controls are volume, gain, and tone for each side. So the drives are completely independent from each other. And you can also boost the mids and the low end of the blues breaker circuit. And on the Klon, you can put some blend of the original signal in with three switch settings from none to I think half to full clean, which is 50-50. Anyway, you can also choose whether to have the Klon go into the blues breaker or the blues bla breaker, blues breaker go into the Klon or have them in parallel, which is where the real fun lies and you can get super gainy. This is one of those pedals that just makes guitar playing fun. And when I plugged into it, I had fun. And in my review, I have fun. And you can watch that review if you want by clicking that card up there. And I do indeed raise many a smile and a few silly faces whilst riffing my curls off. The pedal is available now for the quite hefty price of about $350, 350 euros and about 350 pounds. You know the deal, I tried to stay international, but that should give you an indication of the rough price. And yes, it is indeed a boutique pedal and it's pretty, therefore highly desirable. And I know that that may seem slightly hypocritical that I'm moaning about Epiphone prices whilst telling you that a $350 dual overdrive pedal is great. I am aware of this and I don't really care. I should, but I don't really. Well, I do a bit, but not enough to change my ways. Thank you to the wonderful people that support this show on Patreon. Their names are on screen now. Also thanks to the people showing their support right here on YouTube. Their names are also on screen now. Hello. If you would like your name up in digital lights, then click the join button right here on YouTube or visit my Patreon link in the video description and first comment. As always, here's a special thanks to the top tier members. And I'm gonna do it in the style of emphasizing the wrong part of the name. Here we go, this is, this is the challenge. Sarang, Narayan, Andrew, Morgan, PQ, Deads, Dustin, Bonnet, Gary, O'Neill, Josh Tamberg, Chris Huff, Doug Pudgett, Alinta, Boss Ten, Boom Shaka Loka, Dirk. This prank is officially sponsored by Jason Welch, Bazell, Michael Lerner, Buddha Blue. Oh, this is this is tough. Hugh G. Rex Sean, Pops Place, April Kurtz. 
that, that was harder to do than I thought it was going to be. Thank you, top tier members. You keep my weasel greased. Go ahead and click there to subscribe. Comment your pick of the week down below in the comments section if you disagree with mine, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.